Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things that I think that uh, people kind of do want to know, but they also don't want to hear the bad news in any case. Okay, so some of the stuff we're going to go on today is just some of the legalities of um, you know, four-wheel drive and stuff. And what I've actually um, done on my Instagram page is I've actually, each week we're doing a little quiz in regards to most of the stuff sort of um, law related um, and guidelines related stuff. But um, each week we have a little quiz that you can answer um, and you can help keep informed. I'll, uh, what Basically what I do is I put up a question, you answer it, and then a little bit later, I'll give you the, well, give you the correct answer straight away. But what I'll do is I'll actually reference the material where that information comes from, okay? So that so last week we did one on suspension lifts, not suspension lifts, actual ride height lifts. Um, and a lot of people um, got that wrong. Um, it was a little bit of a trick question, but, uh, um, but it contained some important information. But if you want that sort of content, jump across to our Instagram channel, yeah, quiz every week, um, uh, just in regards to some factual information that everyone should know. So just before we crack in the video, um, hoping you might notice that I've got this little mic. Um, hopefully it's going to improve the sound quality. Uh, I've got a bit of feedback from um, some of the watches that the sound quality is not up to scratch and you'd be absolutely right. Um, this is only a little cheap mic that I've had for a while actually, but I haven't used it because I've just, I didn't think the sound quality was up to scratch, but Having a bit of a closer look at it, another go, it actually probably does work better than just the, the regular uh, mic on the um, camera. So yeah, let me know if you think it's better. So basically what I'm talking about, going to talk about today is wheels, tyres and suspension. Uh, why I've done what I have. I'm not going to go into engineering and certifications and things like that. We're going to stick to what's considered minor modifications. Those modifications, uh, those laws are going to vary slightly across different states. But generally speaking, they all result in the same end result, but they achieve it in different ways. But we'll go into that a little bit more later on. What I will do is I'll leave a link to all the different states' information sheets that will help you make the right decision when it comes to putting or modifying your vehicle legally and staying on the right side of the law. Now, if you find the um, information I want to give you today helpful um, and you like the content, do me a favour, click the like button down, down the bottom there. It's going to help build the channel and just get it out there for other people to watch. Now obviously from a, from a different country like the US or we've actually got a few um, watches from India of all places, you might even find this helpful. It might help you find out what's legal in your country and uh, especially if countries like the US or the UK or places like that where uh, generally speaking you know we all kind of think in the same way and uh, you know it's all about reducing trauma and um, and all those different stakeholders that are trying to save money and save lives on the roads. Okay, so now if definitely if you live in Australia, but I imagine most countries are the same. Uh, so in Australia, all your Jeep Wrangler Rubicons or Toyota Hiluxes, or the, they're all the same. Regardless of what state you're in, they're all the same. They come off the factory and when they're distributed out to the community, everyone's got the same equipment, okay? And th those vehicles all have to comply with a thing called ADRs, the Australian Design Rules. Now, with that, what you can do is you can jump on the internet and you can go to, if it's New South Wales, you can go to RMS, or there's, um, which is the old RTA. In other states, you've got um, the equivalent um, authorities. But you can jump on there and you can download this thing called a data sheet. Now in your data sheet, I, I carry around the data sheet with me, okay? Just in case I was to get pulled over, it's an easy reference for the, for the police to look at. They can compare my vehicle to this data sheet, uh, which essentially lists all the factory specs of the vehicle, including tire size, suspension height, GVM, all those sorts of things that's not included on your registration paper. What I'll do is I'll leave a link for you so you can go and look up your vehicle and have all those factory specs and you can print that out and carry that around with you as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is tires. Now we're not gonna talk about the brand or the type of tire. Um, we just, uh, because you now these are mud tires and, but it's, we're not really talking about that for this. Okay, what we're talking about is tire size and why I've chosen this tire size. 
Now, in terms of the legalities, we can't go in New South Wales, we can't go any more than 7% larger than the largest factory option tyre that's fitted there. And that's the diameter of the tyre. Can't be any more than 7%. Now, the factory tyres that this comes with, they're actually quite large. They're, they're actually a, a, a 255-75-17, which is a 32-inch tyre, roughly. These are a 285-70-17. Now, that is only a tiny little bit bigger than what it comes with. It only, only works out to be um, about, I think it's roughly about 10 mil. Uh, uh, I'll, we can do another video later on about how to calculate these things, but it's not really that much bigger. They are a bit wider, but um, in terms of diameter, it's only a tiny little bit bigger. Now, we can go up to 7% larger, which I think works out to be roughly a 34 inch tie with the, with the Randall Rubicons. And that's, um, you know, if you compare that to other cars like Hiluxes and things like that, you can't fit tyres this big legally on your Hilux uh, without a modification or a certification that is, uh, sorry, a modification that is certified, okay? Um, and that's just the way it is. There's nothing you can argue about that. It's just the way the law is. If you get caught, um, you can potentially get done for it. Now, additionally to that, you can't increase the ride height of the vehicle with the tyres any more than 25 mil. That means the maximum increase in diameter is 50 mil, and this is the same in Queensland. Another legal thing is your tyres can't protrude from the guards. Okay, so if, they were to, if the police were to get a plumb line and drop it from the the guard there down to the ground, the tyre can't be sort of pushing that plumb plumb line out. If if that makes sense. Okay, so that's the legalities. Now, in terms of practicality, the reason why I've chosen this size tyre, now it is only a tiny little bit bigger than the, the factory option, um, but the factory tyres are actually quite good. The only reason I changed them out is because it's just um, hard to get those tyres when you're in a kind of remote location and they're not readily available. They're a weird sort of factory size tyre, sort of designed, to, even though they're muddies, they're kind of just designed to save fuel and things like that. Whereas these are a common size, they're easy to get wherever you are um, and you'll have no issues getting them and um, whatnot. So that's why I changed them over. Okay, so the next thing is wheels. Now, I'll explain to you why I've stuck with the factory wheels. Now, a lot of people argue about whether steel or alloy is better. Now, I'm going to argue that, yeah, there is benefits and pros and cons to, to steel or alloy, but in my experience, there's like I've had no dramas with alloy wheels and I don't see any reason as long as they're well made and they're high quality it doesn't really it's fine um, and it makes no difference um, yeah you know if you do damage your steel rim you can bash it back into into shape but I don't know I've never damaged a rim um, or structurally ever in the bush now here's the main reason why I've stuck with well, there's a couple of main reasons why I stuck with the factory ones. First of all, I really like the look of these rims. I think they look, they're sporty and they look tough, in my opinion, and they suit the vehicle. That's just a subjective thing. But the other main reason why I stick with the factory size is the fact that the offset remains from the factory. Now, if you were to offset the rims or put offset rims on there, so a negative offset essentially brings the tyre out from the guard. Now, the first thing to remember is you can't, have any more than 25 mil of track width per side okay so um, 50 mil in total is a limit you can increase the track by but the problem is if you put offset rims uh, on your vehicle you essentially what you're doing is it's like a lever so your bearing sits nice and central the way it is okay with a tire sitting nicely over that bearing there's two bearings and they sit nice and evenly with those wheels. Now, if you put offset rims on, what you're going to do is, is you're going to start to lever that pressure onto one of the bearings and also your studs, okay? Now, without going into the physics of it, um, the risks are if you put, if you run a too high offset or even over time, damage can occur to your studs and your bearings. You could have bearings explode, bearings fail, um, studs bust off it's just that risk that you increase it's not to say that can't happen with a, a zero offset but 
the wider you go out, or the long, the more you change the offset, the higher the risk is. And that's why you see a lot of these YouTubers with busted wheel bearings and you know busted studs. It's because they're running offset rims. It might look cool, but the actual practicality of it, um, certainly if you're doing long distance touring, I don't see any reason to do it. Now, in terms of legalities, like I said, you can't have any more than 25 mil, okay? So on each side, so 50 mil in total. So if you're running a, say, a 72 Land Cruiser and you've got that 100 mil narrower rear track, guess what? You can't run, uh, you can't increase your wheel track by that 100 mil, illegal. Okay, so lifts and ride heights. So uh, what we've got here is a, on the Wrangler, we've got a Old Moon EMU two inch lift, which is about 50 mil. Now in New South Wales, 50 mil is the most that you can uh, increase the, the lift by, okay? Um, on any light vehicle. Uh, now, here's something to take into account, is the fact that the actual weight of the vehicle is obviously going to vary slightly uh, what the height actually turns out to be, all right? So you might have a, a uh, system that's rated at two inches or 50 mil, but depending on what how much weight you're running in the vehicle, um, it might be a little bit different. So you've got to remember that, um, you know, the, these things are going to be checked with usually with measuring tapes and things like that, so you still need to work out um, that you're, you're within that 50 mil. Now with your maximum suspension lift of 50 mil and your maximum lift from the tyres of 25 mil, that gives you maximum overall lift of 75 millimetres in ride height. Now this is why all your mainstream companies like ARB or Old Man Emu, um, Pedders, those sort of companies will just sell you a 50 mil suspension lift because it saves them all the hassle from you know, the, the whole engineering issue. They can just bolt it straight in your car, they don't have to worry about getting it signed off by an engineer to get it to be road legal, okay? Now, people will certainly argue, and and I've no doubt some of the US viewers will definitely um, say that the the modifications I've done are, are, are conservative. And yeah, you could you could say that. Um, but the reasons why is in terms of, it improves, improves that reliability, um, it stops me getting in trouble from the law, and I have absolutely no trouble getting anywhere I need to go, and I take on plenty of tough tracks. Um, I don't do the extreme stuff. I think that's you know that's there's time and a place for those sorts of things, and um, it's just my personal opinion. But that's the sort of vehicle that you send you take to a location on the back of a you tow there on a trailer, and then drive it because um, look, look if you if you're doing dodgy stuff with your truck and it's got huge lifts and stuff that's well outside even the engineering scope of things. Um, I think you're putting um, people at risk on the roads by driving that vehicle around. And that's why people get you know, their defect notices when they do those sorts of things. You can't expect anything less. Anyway, if you tune in next week, uh, the plan is what we're doing is we're going to do a video on uh, tyre pressures and some things that you probably haven't heard anywhere else. Um, some considerations that you're probably not taking into account. Um, and uh, things you can factor in when you're adjusting your tyre pressures and stuff like that. Yeah, if you like the uh, content, yeah, do me a favour, click the like button down, subscribe to the channel, and um, depending on what state you're in, I've left a link down the bottom uh, in the description about uh, how to get information sheets on your particular state. Just remember, generally speaking, they're all the same, um, and if you stick with those guidelines, you should be okay. So if you've made it this far, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.